this morning with the news additional criminal charges have been filed by the special special counsel against former president trump they are related to his handling of classified documents at mar-a-lago the latest version of this indictment alleges trump was involved in a plan to delete security video now to be clear this is separate from another possible indictment trump is facing over his attempts to overturn the 2020 election and the events of January 6. That is the case the former president was referring to earlier this month when he talked about receiving a target letter from special counsel Jack Smith that usually indicates an indictment is coming. The charges haven't been filed yet in that case. If it feels like there are a lot of different legal strands here, well, that's because there are. But we're going to try to clear it all up. We'll start with NBC's Garrett Hake this morning. He covers the Trump campaign for us. Garrett, good morning. Hey, Savannah, good morning. Yeah, all eyes in Washington yesterday were focused on this federal courthouse behind me where grand jurors had been hearing evidence in that 2020 election interference case. That's when the special counsel's office dropped this bombshell new indictment in the other federal case against the former president, the one relating to his handling of classified documents at Mar-a-Lago, now alleging that the former president tried to have potentially damaging evidence against him destroyed. Today, former President Trump is facing three more criminal charges related to his handling of highly classified documents at Mar-a-Lago, made public in a new indictment filed by the special counsel Thursday. It charges Mr. Trump with one additional count of willful retention of national defense information and two additional counts of obstruction. It also adds a new third defendant, Mar-a-Lago property manager Carlos de Oliveira, Mar-a-Lago surveillance video key to the new charges. Prosecutors say when Mr. Trump heard of the government's request for classified material from Mar-a-Lago, he said, quote, I don't want anybody looking through my boxes. And isn't it better if there are no documents? The government says the boxes were later moved. After the FBI search of the property, the government demanded surveillance video. The next day, prosecutors say, the former president called his property manager and spoke for 24 minutes. Two days later, according to the indictment, De Oliveira and Nauta, quote, went to look at surveillance video in a security booth and walked through a tunnel with flashlights pointing out surveillance cameras. A few days after that, De Oliveira met with a security employee in an audio closet, telling him that, quote, the boss wanted the server deleted. According to the indictment, the employee responded that he, quote, would not know how to do that and that he did not believe he would have the rights to do that. The indictment, which outlines various meetings between De Oliveira and Nauta in the bushes around Mar-a-Lago, does not say whether they were able to delete any video. A lawyer for De Oliveira had no comment. They want to take away my freedom. Mr. Trump, in an interview with Fox News Digital overnight, called the charges, quote, ridiculous and said he was facing harassment. He has already pleaded not guilty to 37 federal felony charges in the classified documents case brought by the special counsel in June. We have one set of laws in this country, and they apply to everyone. We also learned yesterday that Mr. Trump's attorneys did meet with prosecutors from the special counsel's office about that 2020 election interference case. Mr. Trump later calling that meeting productive. Whether the former president will be indicted related to that case and on what charges remains unknown. Savannah. All right, Garrett, thank you. We turn now to our senior legal correspondent, Laura Jarrett. Laura, good morning. Lots to unpack Hi. here. Superseding, superseding indictment yes. adds a new defendant, new charges, and we learned a lot from this yesterday. Let's talk about these new charges because they really put meat on the bone on this obstruction case, this allegation essentially that the former president and some of his aides tried to cover up the mishandling of classified documents. This really strengthens the prosecutor's hand because it helps them tell a story to the jury that will make sense. We don't have to actually understand the president's motive for holding these documents allegedly, but the idea that he actually conspired to attempt to delete the security footage. Prosecutors, you can just hear the closing argument. Ladies and gentlemen, why would someone do that if they didn't think they did anything wrong? And so all along he said, I've had the right to these documents, but if they're deleting the security footage, it makes it appear prosecutors are going to argue that they knew that they were doing something that was against the law. It seems the prosecutors are playing hardball with some of these Mar-a-Lago employees. Yes. Now another Mar-a-Lago employee 
being charged here. Do you think this is something of a pressure campaign to say, you better come over and tell what you know, or you're, you're looking at some serious prison time? Sure, these are not household names. These are people who were staff at Mar-a-Lago, in fact, in the case of Walt Nano, staff at the White House, who then followed him down and understand that these are people who are loyal. But when you are facing serious prison time, your incentives change a little bit here. And it's clear that they have text messages, they have audio, and prosecutors don't have to show all of their cards. And given the level of detail here, it makes you think that employee number four described in this new indictment, who's this IT director who's, who's relaying that the boss wanted us to delete the server, it's clear that he's probably cooperated with the government and turned over a lot, too. And so it just makes you wonder what else they have and that the two other defendants may not know all of that. Now, we also learned something that goes to the heart of the documents that the president is accused of mishandling and the highly classified nature of them. We all by now have heard this audio tape where he's bragging about this document and he's ruffling papers and he's showing some some document and saying, well, this is highly classified. Now we know something more about what that document was. Yes, and this is the Iran planning document that the president, a former president, apparently was showing off in the prosecutor's telling of this to people who were not authorized to receive classified information. But it was never clear whether, in fact, the Justice Department had received that document, whether they had actually gotten it back. And now, according to this indictment, we know they did get it back. He actually returned it. And it's the only document that he's charged with that he actually returned. All the other documents in the case, they had to go fast for Mar-a-Lago. And so it makes you wonder whether they're charging it now because he said, oh, I don't have it, or it was, you know, it didn't exist. Are they putting this in because they want to be able to show that he actually wasn't telling the truth about that? Well, it's interesting because one of his defenses has been, I was ruffling papers. They were right. newspaper articles. They weren't this classified document. So it makes it interesting in terms of the prosecutors yeah, building that's another case piece there. Of the puzzle. Yep. Laura Jarrett, thank you very much. Oh. I'm coming in fast. First place you